Cascar Super Series for late model stock cars, the McCurley Millen Classic 200. I'm Pat Gonzalez, and along with me here at Cayuga Speedway is Craig Hill. And Craig, what a fiercely competitive series we've had so far. Oh, absolutely, Pat. And you know, it's been equally great, both for the fans across the country at the racetracks and our viewers at home. We've had four different winners in four different races. Well, those four winners are all here at Cayuga Speedway. We have number 25, Jim Lapsovich, who won the opener at Delaware Speedway in his Tim Hortons Ford Thunderbird. The second televised round was at St. Eustache, Quebec, where number 16, Al Turner, took the win in his Logos Lumina. Round number three was out west at Race City Speedway in Calgary, where the popular Brad Jakes took victory aboard his Dynamax Lumina. And then at our last event held at Peterborough Speedway, rookie driver number nine, Peter Gibbons, in the NPN Bearings Lumina, took his first win of the year. And Craig, I think the big question in everybody's mind here at Cayuga today is, will we have, in fact, a fifth different winner, or can one of these previous winners make it to this season? Well, I think what it's going to take here, Pat, is what I call race car smarts. And by that, I mean every one of these Cascar cars are pretty equal when, in terms of horsepower. So it's going to take chassis setup and gearing to run good here. It's also going to take good, concise pit stops, be able to get in, get out without any problems at all, and keep your place on the racetrack. Earlier, we had a chance to see just what kind of speed these cast cars could make on Cayuga's 5 eighths of a mile oval during the Mopar time trial. And what a surprise, the V6 cars ran away from the big block eights as first Dan Delisle eclipsed early leader Kevin Trevlin with a 22-483 flyer. Then the Duke, Duke Sawchuck in the Keys Tours six-cylinder Pontiac Grand Prix broke the beam at 22-320 and the fastest time of the afternoon. So the Mopar Fast 4 is led by the speedy Duke Sawchuck from Windsor, Ontario in a V6, followed by Dan Delisle. Dan is not a regular on the series and he drives a V6 Buick Regal. Then it's Kevin Trevelin in the Malash Racing Engines Tank Talk Pontiac at 22.525 seconds. With Paul Mathers, the newly crowned Delaware Cascar champion, the last of our Mopar Fast Four. And there's Louis Bennett getting this 200-lap classic underway as Cascar, as usual, have elected to invert the grid, putting the fast qualifier Duke Sawchuck down in 12th spot. Well, you saw Brad Jakes there on the pole position with Mike Herniak alongside Dan Delisle sitting back there along with Duke Sotchuk back in that sixth row. Row number 10, John Gaunt, one of our championship hopefuls. He did not have a good run at our last event at Peterborough and is not happy with that 19th qualifying position. He'll have a long way to go to get to the front. Mark Patrick and Dave Levesque sit back there in the last row. There's Mark Dilley sporting that full face helmet as the visor's now down. Well, some of the competitors still prefer the old open face helmet, Pat. Gives them a little opportunity to get a bit of air and, of course, get a cold drink when they need it. On board now with Brad Jakes, you saw the starter, Matt Lake, showing the white flag to the field and the crowd cheering the drivers on as they're prepared to go racing here at Cayuga Speedway. Still very overcast skies. Rain is threatening here this afternoon, but right now a dry racetrack as the pace car heads on a pit road and the green flag flies. We're racing in the McCurley Millen Classic 235. Brad Jake will grab the early lead. The battle for second here between Herniak in the 75, but it is Alex Nagy Jr. in car number 93 bringing that AC Delta Lumina up into the number two position. Well, it's early going yet, Pat, but at the moment, Nagy seems to have the best car set up for the start of this race. His car seems very tight. He can run the inside through very well. And at the moment, he's really got some pressure on Jake. The onboard camera at the moment shows him trying to get down in the inside already. Alex Nagy Jr. down to the inside of Brad Jake, trying to force his way to the front. Jake will shut the door. He's up on the high side of the racetrack. Nagy right down to the bottom of the racetrack as they hit the start finish line to put another lap in the book. Side by side into turn one. Jake's not letting Nagy get through on the inside. And now they'll run door handle to the door handle down the back straightaway. Nagy will inch ahead into the lead. So he has really got that car working well right down to the bottom of the racetrack. Jake will fall in a line as they move around the outside of Sean McGlynn. He has slowed on the racetrack here in the early going. So Alex Nagy Jr., our Cascar National Points leader, continues to run up front. 35, Brad Jake 
will move that Goodrich Lumina up into the fifth place position. Mark Dilly will follow him through as Dilly moves up to sixth. And Turner having some problems here as he's sliding back down through the top ten. Sean Dupuis will put him down one more position. So Al Turner, as we ride on board with the Egbert Ontario driver, sitting back in that eighth place position. There you see ahead of him on the racetrack, Sean Dupuis. Back up front with the leader, 93. It is still Alex Nagy Jr. leading. Here's a great fight going on for fourth. Neil Fair in the 55 car is fourth, number three. There you saw Dan Shirtless in fifth. And a little bit further back as we ride with number nine, Peter Gibbons. He is currently being shown in the 11th place position. And he's having quite a battle here with the 02 car of the defending cast car champion, Kerry Mix, as they come up on Duke Sachuk. And right with this group as well, that red 25 car of Jim Lapsovich. Well, if they ever give out a most careful driver award, they should give it to Peter Gibbons, Pat. Peter was telling me that they've not had to replace a body part on that Lumina all year, and that's quite an accomplishment. 93, Alex Nagy Jr. coming up on Mark Patrick, about to put him a lap down. Oh, and Patrick gets tapped in the rear end. He'll spin it down into the infield here off of turn number two. Mark Patrick off into the infield. Tough luck for Patrick, but there are the snap-on tool standings with Nagy leading, followed by Jake, Berniak, Fair, and Huntville, Dan Shirtman. In sixth, it's Mark Dilley, then Dupuy, Turner, Mathers, and Duke Sawchuck. And as Mark Patrick gets underway, we'll return to Cayuga, Ontario, right after this. Welcome back to the McCurley Millen Classic 200 from Cayuga Speedway. As we look at a great lead battle involving the 93 car of Alex Nagy Jr., 75 Mike Herniak in that SPP Pontiac, and 35 Brad Jakes, who started from the pole position. Jakes on the high side of the racetrack. He can't make that work as he'll slide back into that third place position. 64 Mark Dilley in that yellow Sega Oldsmobile, running in fourth, 55. Neil Fair in fifth as we ride on board with the sixth place driver, but not for long as the number three car there of Dan Shirtless got shuffled back as Sean Dupuis in car number seven moved through to take over that sixth place position. We've had a real shuffling of top positions and a car in trouble. That is the number 20 of Scott Lindsay as he has hit the wall. Looks like he may have cut down a tire as well as some damage to the rear of the car. And this will bring out our first caution flag of the day. Well, this might be a window of opportunity for many of the front runners, Pat. Many of them have been waiting to do their mandatory pit stop. And there's the leader, 93, Alex Nagy in. And John Gunk right behind him. John's still having all sorts of problems with that front end of his LeBaron. Got in a big mix-up in Peterborough last week. Well, Craig, it looks like the AC Delco entry will just take on fuel. No tire change. And Nagy is out with the crew taking just 11 seconds to refuel the car. There's the number 35, Brad Jakes, and number 9, Peter Gibbons, in the NPN Bearings Lumina. They're first out with Nagy behind them as they join the lineup. And this is also a good opportunity for our Dynamax timeout with Pat. Motor racing, like any other team sport, relies on the coordination of several elements to achieve a single result, winning. No more so is that apparent than during a pit stop. In the Cascar Super Series, up to seven crew are allowed over the wall after the car comes to a complete stop in its pit area. The jack person carries the 46-pound jack and places it in a reinforced slot to lift a complete side manually while the tire carrier has dropped the new right side rubber in place. The tire persons are allowed only two impact wrenches and the nuts are preset on the wheels for speed. The fuel person must wear a Nomex fireproof suit as he or she dumps up to 11 U.S. gallons of approved fuel from the quick fill can. And the fuel catch person taking care of the overflow must also be properly clad. While other forms of racing are opting for onboard jacks and pressurized fuel delivery systems, NASCAR here in Canada and NASCAR in the U.S. have kept the tradition alive. And it's a tradition I, for one, hope never changes, Pat. It's one of the highlights of both NASCAR and NASCAR, especially from the fans' point of view. While the green flag flies here again at Cayuga Speedway as we're back to racing after a brief shower while we were doing that Dynamax timeout piece, but the clouds have moved off, and we're back to that close racing at the front. And there you see the 75 car now of Mike Herniak, who has jumped up into that lead position. Herniak did not go to the pits, as many of the other front runners did, so he has inherited the lead. 
55, Neil Fair running in that second place position. Mark Dilley, 64, another one of those drivers who did not pit. He runs in third. The 15 car of Jim Patrick runs in fourth. And the 25, the Tim Hortons, fourth Thunderbird of Jim Lapsovich sitting back in that fifth place position. So we've had a real shuffling of the top ten with some of the cars going out of pit road for their mandatory pit stop and others electing to stay out. They'll be pitting later on in the event. Mike Herniak, single file as they run it off down the back straightaway. There's Peter Gibbon in car number nine battling with Brad Jakes. They're out of the top ten right now, but of course they have completed their mandatory pit stop and they should be able to go the rest of the way. Oh, a contact there you saw between Jakes and Gibbons number nine as they got into it. Sean Dupuy in car number seven running right behind the NTN Baron Blumina of Peter Gibbons. This is a great fight going on. Leading that group is 0-2. Kerry Mix in the Midas car. He's had a pretty good run so far here this afternoon. The 52 there is Jimmy Wearsma. Good five-way fight involving those drivers. Lead battle side by side. Neil Fair on the inside of Mike Herniak. Herniak getting up into that high groove. That's going to cost him some time on the racetrack. And he'll get shuffled back into the third place position. So it is Neil Fair who had that great run up in the third at Peterborough, leading here at Piuga. Well, Pat, you can see that Herniak's having some trouble with that outside groove. And you know, Piuga's not a racetrack where you want to run a loose car. But perhaps his tires are going off a little bit and it's pushing him to the outside. Number 64, Mark Dilley right up alongside of Neil Fair. They'll battle side by side. And Dilly will take the lead. The bottom of the racetrack definitely the quicker way around the oval here at Cayuga. And moving up to challenge for second now is Jim Patrick. A little bit of contact there between Patrick and Neil Fair in the 55 car. But it is Mark Dilly now, 64, who leads. Patrick on the inside will take over second. Well, I'm impressed with number 15, Jim Patrick. Pat, he doesn't race in all the national series events. He was the top Mopar qualifier at the first cast car race at Delaware, and here he is up in the second spot. But you know he comes from a racing family with cousin Mark in the 12 car, and his sister also races. While number nine, Peter Gibbons and 0-2, Kerry Mix have charged back up into the top 10 as they try to run down the 75 car of Mike Herniak. Peter Gibbons having a great charge back up through the field after completing his pit stop as we ride on board now with Peter Gibbons, who's had a busy 1994 season running not only the Cascar Super Series, but several of the ARCA Super Speedway events in the United States. Here is the race now for that second place position. Jim Lapsovich will move the Tim Hortons Thunderbird around Jim Patrick to take over second place. So we have the Ford Thunderbirds now running in second and third. And there's the snap-on tools leaderboard with Mark Dilley out front, then it's Lapsovich, Jim Patrick, Fair, and Mathers. In sixth, it's the hard-charging Gibbons, followed by Mix, Dupuy, Jakes, and Mike Herniak, the early leader. He's been pushed way back to 10th pass. On board now with number 35, Brad Jakes in the Dynamax Lumina. He's in the thick of this battle. Oh, Jakes into the back of Dupuy. Just about sends him sideways into the wall as those two cars got together. And then he runs. Oh, another crash here up in a turn three. That is 0-3. Jack Monahan, 53, Chris Brandt. And I believe number 69, Dave Levesque, was also involved. But he has continued. Yellow caution flag out on the speedway. There's our senior stash winner, Al Turner, in for some tires, Pat. He hasn't had the handling sorted out on that car all day. And he's still working on it, obviously. Al Turner heads down pit road. There's 55, Neil Fair. He's completed his pit stop, Paul Mather. And also completing a pit stop was the 75 car of Mike Herniak. We're about to go back to racing here at Cayuga. The pace car pulls off. 64, Mark Dilley, 25, Jim Lapsovich side by side as they take the green flag back into turn one. 25, Jim Lapsovich up to the outside of the racetrack. He can't make that work as 64, Dilley will take the lead running the low groove. There is Mark Dilley in that yellow Sega Sports Oldsmobile running up front, 25, Lapsovich in second. But Peter Gibbons looks like he's able to make that MTN bearings Lumina work on the high side of the racetrack as he runs side by side with the 15 car of Jim Patrick for that third place position. Oh, number nine, Gibbons really running it wide and he'll take over that third place spot. Well, it should be remembered, Pat, that both Mark Dilley, number 64, and Jim Lapsovich, 25, have not made their mandatory pit stops by our calculations, and already those that have made their stops, such as Gibbons and Jakes, have already caught up to the leaders. Well, there is Peter Gibbons, and he is all over Jim Lapsovich for that second place position. There's 64, Mark Dilley as the Prestone wall cap. Gives us these great shots. Oh, sideways, number 35, Brad Jakes. 97, Rob Neely right into the Dynamax Lumina. Brad Jakes as these two drivers have collected each other on the back straightaway. And 
NASCAR Super Series for the Castle Cup after this. Welcome back to Cuyahoga Speedway in Ontario as we get ready to restart the McCurley Mill 200. Mark Dilley sideways out of turn number four. He'll lose the lead as Jim Lapsovich jumps up front. And now we ride on board with Dan Shirtliff in the Goodrich Lumina as he runs right behind the 02 car of Kerry Mix. There's 64. Mark Dilley in that yellow Sega Oldsmobile. Some close racing up front in this lead group. And now Peter Gibbons down on the inside of Lapsovich. He will take the lead. Gibbons has really had his car working in very, very well as he will lead them back across start finish. Lapsovich in second. Kerry Mix jumps up into third. 64, Mark Dilley is fourth. And number three, Dan Shirtliff is back in the fifth place spot. And there's the Prestone halfway update. But I'll just remind you, the second place driver has not made his mandatory pit stop. And I fear that the Tim Horton team has miscalculated this one, Pat. While Craig Lapsovich won that first race with excellent pit stops orchestrated by crew chief Don Thompson, Jr., well, Mark Dilley is looking for his first win. I talked to him earlier about just how difficult that can be. This year seems everybody's a little closer. There's nobody really, you know, going to dominate any any races or any nights or weeks or anything like that. Like, it's very close in in, uh, in every aspect, you know, as far as pit crews. Like, you go to the pit stop contest, they're close. The races are close, qualifying is close. It's, it's good racing. Well, we've got some good racing here for that seventh place position between 74, Duke Sotchuk, our fast qualifier, and number 92, Earl Ross, who moves up to the outside, but Sotchuk will hold on to that position. 28, Kevin Treble in there, another one of our quick qualifiers, but he is currently running a lap down. We go on board with the Duker, Duke Sotchuk, in car number 74, as he is cleared off from Earl Ross in car number 92. Duke Sotchuk driving that V6 powered car, and he has had a good run here so far. There you see the 15 of Jim Patrick as he runs right behind the 92 car of Earl Ross. Well, Earl Ross is a guy with a lot of experience, Pat. Here's a guy that has won a NASCAR Winston Cup race. He's the only Canadian to do that. He retired for about 10 years. He's back in NASCAR, and he's finding it a little bit difficult to get around this year. Well, Craig, no doubt about it. Very, very intense competition in this Tascar National Series as we run with Dan Shirtliff in that good wrench Lumina as he runs just behind Mark Dilley. Smoke now coming from the rear of Dilley's car. He's got a problem as he runs down on the inside of the racetrack. Shirtliff will move around him. Well, that smoke was coming out from underneath the car pad and not necessarily from the exhaust pipe. So obviously he's broken an oil line or done something that is very difficult to stop. Oh, look at that. There's oil all over the back wheels, and obviously he's got a big problem. Top break for Mark Dilley, who had run so well here at Cayuga, up front for most of the afternoon, but now he brings it onto pit road, and he may have to park the Sega Oldsmobile. Dan Shirtliff now picking up one position as he runs back in that fifth place position, and going through on the inside is number seven, Sean Dupuis, the Windsor, Ontario driver, picking up one more position, and now... The number three car there of Shirtlift comes under pressure from Duke Sotchuk in car number 74. So things really starting to heat up in the top ten. Well, Dan Shirtlift seems to be chasing the racetrack a little bit in the later stages of this race, Pat. I think maybe it's getting a little loose on the outside. NTN Bearings crew chief Julio looking on as his driver Peter Gibbons continues to run at the front, followed by Jim Lapsovich, but he has yet to pit. Here's the battle for third between the 0-2 of Kerry Mix and Sean Dupuy. Dupuy right down on the bottom of the racetrack, pulls up alongside of Mix as they run down the back straightaway up into turn three, and Mix will shut the door as he holds on. Now he runs wide off of four, and number seven, Sean Dupuy, will take over that third place position. Dupuy charging through on the inside to take over third. Kerry Mix drops to fourth. Number three, Dan Shirtliff is back in the fifth place position. 74, Duke Sotchuk is sixth. And there's Alex Snakey in the pits again, Pat. It's been a tough day for the Cascar National Points meter so far. We go on board with Dan Shirtliff as he battles here with the 0-2 car of Kerry Mix. They go side by side here for the fourth place position. And Dan Shirtliff has moved through into that fourth place position. Now he'll try to get around the outside of Randy Slack in that 30 car. And here comes Duke Sotchuk. Down to the inside of Kerry Mix, he'll pick up a position. So some fierce racing up here in the top ten. There's Alex Nagy in that number 93 AC Delta Lumina. He had such a great run so far this season, but 
will retake that fifth place position down the back straightaway. Gary Mix coming up on the 30 car of Randy Slack. Oh, he gets right into the back of him, spin slack around the caution flag is out. Well, he had a little help there for sure, Pat. Peter Gibbons' wife looks on as Lapsovich finally makes his pit stop. Only a few laps left. It's obvious they gambled and lost. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to Cayuga Speedway and the Cascar Super Series for the Casco Cup as we wind down this McCurley Millen Classic 200. Number nine, Peter Gibbons, looks poised to take his second Super Series win in a roll, Craig. And what an excellent job the team has done for this ARCA Super Speedway driver. They got him in and out of the pits early in the race, and just like his win at Peterborough, the car has been getting stronger as the race wears on. The white flag being displayed by Matt Lake as Gibbons goes through turn number one for the final time. Sean Dupuy is right there in second, but it does not look as though he's going to be able to catch him. Up into turn three now for the final time. Gibbons has had a great run here at Cayuga. He's had a very, very strong car right from the opening lap. Checkered flag out of the line, and there is the Cascar Super Series win for Peter Gibbons. A great win for Gibbons, and all oh, Patrick slides across the line sideways. The rookie Gibbons shows his stuff as John Dupuy comes second, followed by Shirtlift, Sawchuck, and Herniak. Making his way to sixth, it's Lapsovich, then Mix, Ross, Turner, and Jim Wiersma, and here's Pat with the winner. John uh, Dupuy was right there uh, in your mirrors right down uh, to the end. Uh, were you troubled at all that maybe he was going to make uh, a real move there with a uh, few laps to go? Well, the car got a little bit loose, and then it just come right to me, and then it was just, you know, we were just out riding. After that, I could pull away any time that I wanted, really, so I was just hoping for no flat tires and, <laughs> and get out there. Well, one more big one coming up at uh, Delaware Speedway. We're going to be going for three in a row. Yeah, we're going to keep going. The crew's been excellent, and uh, we're going to get out there and go for the third one. And there are the race stats as compiled by Pro Score, with Gibbons leading half of the 200, and that's quite an accomplishment. Bob Barron from McCurley Millen presents the trophies to Gibbons, Dupuy, and Dan Shirtless. We'll be with you next for the final of our sixth race series from Delaware Speedway. This is Pat Gonzalez for Craig Hill saying so long from Cayuga. This event was brought to you in part by Dynamax Performance Exhaust. Snap-on tools, the official tool of Cascar, STP, and Questone. Mopar, genuine parts, your first choice. Castrol, manufacturers of GTX. This event was sanctioned by Cascar, Canadian Association for Stock Car Auto Racing.